Amongst all the wearing machines today, there's plenty of them here with us being at the British Commercial Museum. I saw a Vauxhall Royale gently float into the car park and I thought we have got to come and grab the owner and have a chat with him. Now this is Andrew and Andrew owns this Vauxhall Royale. And with it being such a rare car, Andrew, what's driven you to buy one? Well, I used to sell Vauxhalls from 1978 to 1994, yeah. so I used to sell these new. Very ex top of the line car for Vauxhall then, um, costing somewhere around £9,000 in October 79 when this car was registered. That's a lot of money. Were they quite a big seller at the time or were no. they quite hard to shift? No, they were, they were a very expensive car and at the time it was the, when fuel was going up in price uh, and Vauxhall wanted to move up to compete with uh, Jaguar and Rover, you know, the yeah. small Jag 3.4 and 3.5 Rover, Rover 2.6. Um, and Peugeot 604, things like that. But they, w they wanted to go really up market. So with it being a car which wasn't mass market, like something like a, a Corsa, for example, do you find it quite difficult to get parts for it? What does it share parts with? A lot of awful parts, because these cars were based on the Senator A. Yeah. Uh, so, but part, you can get little bits and pieces. Body panels are difficult to get. Yeah. Um, and they only made 7,500. That's between nothing, saloon and coops, yeah. But they didn't make that many. And how many remain, do you know? I'm not sure. I think there's a few, there are more coupes than saloons, I think. Yeah. Well, it's a beautiful car. You've really kept on top of it. Now, you were telling me that you've owned this car. Is it 15 years? Did About you say? 15 years I've had this 15 car. 15 yeah. years. And have you done a lot of work to it yourself, or did it arrive looking this beautiful? No, it was very, it was almost as it is now, yeah. I've done little bits and pieces. Yeah. It was a one owner car. Oh, okay, that explains uh, and it a lot. it was sold from uh, Southport Engineering, yeah. which was part of the Brig group which I work for mm. in Blackburn. Well, I'll tell you what, you've done a real cracking job of keeping it spick and span over the last 15 years. It's lovely to see it out. Where else might people find you this year at car shows? I'm um, going to the Festival of Exceptional. Are you going back again this year? Yeah, um, we're going to the uh, Vauxhall uh, Sidewell. Oh, brilliant. Well, we'll definitely see you at Festival of the Unexceptional and good luck for the rest of the show season. Thank you very much. Thank you. You can't have seriously have thought that I was going to do a car video and not feature some Morris Miners. And my goodness, have we got a lineup today? Because of it being Drive It Day, Lancashire Morris Miner Owner Club, their branch, have all met up here today. And apparently so many of their members have turned up that they're not sure they've printed enough instructions for their road run today, which probably means that we're not going to be able to do that one. But it's OK, so we've got plenty of cars to see here today. Now, this particular car caught my eye because I'm a bit of a sucker for a Trafalgar Blue Morris Minor and I was chatting away to Gareth and Gareth tells me in fact I'm going to let Gareth tell his story Gareth how have you ended up with this Morris Minor? Well this is a 1969 Morris Minor mm -hmm. it was bought in January 1972 by my granddad and my granny yeah and it was their daily driver I was born June 72 so I've literally grown up with the car um, so it was always exciting at, you know at school kicking out time to yeah. find this outside giving us a lift home yeah. no seat belts in the back but that was all part of the fun back then um, he passed away in 2003 my mum took it on and she had it till 2018 and she just decided she wasn't driving it enough so she asked if I wanted to take it on so I've had it since December 2018 I've got involved in the Lancashire branch and the National yeah. Morris Minor Owners Club as well. Yeah. Uh, and I've risen to secretary of the club and I just love my involvement in it. Love days like this when we can all get together as, as a group and go out for a road run and stop off at a cafe and have a brew afterwards. It's just that camaraderie you get in a club like this is fantastic. Oh, absolutely. With this being in your family for so long, you must have some really great memories. What do you know what the mileage is from you? Not from new, no. It's, uh, it's been messed around with. My granddad was a mechanic for the RAF in the war, what so he did he? all his own work on it. Yeah. And it's got a, a silver seal replacement head on it. So yeah. he's been tinkering over the years. And I dare say the Speedo won't be the original one. So no idea of genuine mileage, but it was their daily driver. So it looked clocked up a fair few miles. They lived in Lancaster, us mm. in Preston. So it's a 60 mile round trip for them to come and visit us, Gosh. which they do at least once a week and they'd, just, they'd take themselves off for the day and go and sit by the coast and my granny would do a knitting and my yeah. granddad would read the paper and they'd just enjoy just sitting in the peace and quiet and it gave them uh, a lot of freedom at a time when not a lot of people have motor cars yeah. uh, so it's very precious to me to, to now be able to own it. So my final question is, is this car is incredibly tidy. I mean, 
it just looks almost new. Have you restored that? Did your granddad restore it? How's it looking like this? Well, my granddad did all the mechanical work, so ev everything to do with the mechanicals is, is largely down to him. The only thing that's been done subsequently tidy. is 2003, 2004. <laughs> yeah. um, my mum had some work done by uh, the Morris Minor Millennium Company in Manchester. Oh, yeah, yeah. They fitted an alternator and an unleaded mm -hmm. head. Um, and they did a, a respray on it as well. So that's that's why it's it's looking quite so shiny after mm. a lifetime of service to my grandparents. But my granddad, you know, when he changed the oil, he'd, he'd paint the old oil on the underneath oh, to, yeah. to protect it. So it's in pretty solid condition underneath. So I've, I've inherited a good one, really. So my objective is to is to keep it that way. Well, I must say, your granddad must have been a fine mechanic to have not only got the car so far into today's world but also for it to be so beautifully maintained it's a lovely vehicle so well thank done you. you should be very proud thank you very much thank you there we were looking at the morris miners a very humble unassuming vehicle and we came down towards the museum and we realized there were more cars for us to be getting our teeth into and what did we stumble upon first but this beautiful Chevy Impala. Now I was just talking to the two owners. Now, a Chevy Impala, how many miles to the gallon are you getting on that, Bert? How many miles to the gallon? Yeah. Well, that's a favourite question of people. The first thing they say, how many miles to the gallon? We always say, smiles to the gallon. <laughs> but yeah, to answer your question, about 16. 16 miles? 16 to the gallon. Gosh, I'll tell you what, that is one of those petrol bills that I would not want to be paying. However, I imagine the driving experience is unrivaled. How long have you owned her? 19 years. 19 years? Yeah, I bought it in California. You bought it in California? Yeah. And so how did you bring the car from California to Lancashire? Well, it came over from Oakland, California, by ship. Yes. Over to Tilbury Dock. Um, one of the features about it was that after buying the car yeah um it was delivered to me january 2006 yes so it came over at christmas on the boat yeah 10 months afterwards i was doing some repairs under the back end yeah and they actually encountered a live black widow spider <gasps> no yeah what did you do and it was living it was living in a, a web Yes. On top of the fuel tank. What do you do now, with your dick? <laughs> <laughs> so, did you run for the hills or did you try and catch it? Well, to be honest with you, when I saw it, I didn't... When I saw it, it, it looked a bit weird. Yeah. I didn't know exactly what it was. So I, I bothered um, a humane spider catcher. Oh, yeah. From my neighbour. Yeah. He doesn't like killing spiders, so she put, gets them on the wall, closes the shutter and throws them outside. Mm. I managed to catch it with that. Um, it also had a baby sack. Oh, no! And I believe there's about 400 babies in, yeah. in the sack. Fortunately, the car came over, as I said, at Christmas yeah. 2005. I got it January 2006. Yeah. Because it was Christmas, obviously winter. Oh, did they die? Fortunately, all the babies must have died in the sack. Oh, God. If it had been the middle of summer, it would have been a different story. Well, that must have been quite a scary job for a job that you thought was going to be relatively straightforward. Do you do a lot of the work yourself? Yes, I am a, an ex-mechanic. Fantastic. And, uh, I mean, I've worked all my life on cars. And so, yes, I do all my own repairs. Now, these aren't native to the UK, so what do you do about trying to get parts for these? Um, we have to get most parts from America. Yeah. But you won't believe the system there yeah. is setting to none. I mean, you can order a part. If you want to pay a bit extra, I'm not joking, you yeah. can get it from America in three days to your door. Three days, yeah. my goodness. It you, puts can't, you can't get a parcel from London in three I was going to say, it puts the Royal yeah. Mail to shame. Well, I'll tell you what, I think you've probably had more attention than any other vehicle I've seen here today, so yeah. I'll let you get on. But we wish you all the luck. It's a beautiful car, and thank you for bringing it. And 
congratulations on taking such good care of her because she looks absolutely stunning. Well, it was a lifelong dream of mine to own one of these when I was 19. Yeah. Um, I've always wanted one, could never afford one. Yeah. And I got one about four to six years later, so. Well, well there you go. <laughs> yeah. Well, well done, and thank you very much for today. Thank you. Now the last time that I saw a Tesco lorry, it certainly didn't look as cool as this. It was trundling up on the slow lane on the motorway and it was dressed in the boring livery. This is far more exciting and a blast from the past. Now it's been driven today by Ian. Ian, is this an original Tesco lorry? Not, not an original one, no. It was built, uh, built to look like a Tesco lorry and it was built to celebrate um, Hunter Pack serving Tesco's with carrots for 40 years. So it's 10 years ago since it was built. So it's been built for 10 years, so it's yeah. 50 years this year since they served Tesco with carrots. So. Gosh, and so what, how much effort goes into building something like this? Is it quite easy to get the parts? Well, the actual lorry uh, started its life with um, West Lancs District Council, yeah. uh, and it was used by various other people as well. I don't know the names mm -hmm. off the top of my head. Yes. Smiths of Eccles uh, deli was delivery before when we first got it. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was just a case of, with this actual lorry, um, taking the paint off and repainting it in Tesco's livery. Yeah. Uh, a, few, a few minor adjustments to it, but basically it was a complete lorry. The trailer, um, we couldn't find one to replicate the Tesco trailers from, uh, from yesteryear. Yeah. So it was built with old panels that are on the side, yeah. period axles and period landing gear, but the chassis and the framework were all built new in Tesco's uh, workshops. In really? sorry, in uh, Hunter Pack's workshops. Really? Yes. And how long does something like that take? I would say from start to finish, it took probably about eight to ten months. That's quite yeah. quick. Yeah. I mean, to, to do one full restoration that's in a mess, a wagon, it can take four to five years. Yeah. But because they were building this from new, uh, the, the trailer, with old parts and new parts, and the fact that the lorry didn't need any great amount of restoration, um, it didn't take as long. So, And it needed to be finished for the anniversary of the, of the, uh, the 40 years. So, yeah. Now, if you were to <laughs> service something like this, how easy is it to get all the bits you need? Um, not too bad, to be honest, for the for the, for the, Leyland, the old Leylands. Uh, some of the older stuff, it's, it can be difficult to get parts for, but the engine that's in this and the axles, and uh, not too difficult, to be honest. Is it shared with other things? What do you mean by shared? So, was it on licence to anyone? Did anybody else use it? So, is there anybody else using this particular engine? Was oh, sorry, yeah, the yeah. engine that's in it's a, a Leyland 680. Yeah, so there's a lot of um, a lot of wagons have got these 680 engines in. Yes. Oh, so the, the parts are probably more plentiful. Plentiful, than... yeah. In fact, so probably you can find parts for engines like this probably more easily than some of that rare 90s stuff that seems to have just died out and been scrapped. I mean. If you go, if you want to get into something like this in your big commercials, are there clubs around for people to do it? There's several clubs, yes. Uh, I mean, we're, we aren't a club, we're basically a, a museum. Yeah. Uh, it's a private museum that William always said to me, it's not open to the public, it's open to enthusiasts. That's so anybody nice. that's an enthusiast and likes old wagons, they're welcome to come and have a look at the museum because it's not just about the wagons, the mm -hmm. building itself and the pipe organ that's in there and all the memorabilia that William collected over the years. Yeah. Fascinating place. We get wagon drivers coming, old wagon drivers, and they bring the wives. Oh, 
Yeah, and they, they walk through the door and it's like, oh, and then as soon as they walk through the door and they look round, they can't believe what they're seeing. This so sounds a really great place. Where it is. is it for anybody watching at home who wants to get in touch or find out more? It's at, it's in Tarleton, which is near Preston. Yes. Um, it's part of um, Hunter Pack. Uh, it's at the back of Hunter Pack. Yes. It's the back of Hunter Pack. Back of Hunter Pack. And what's the museum called? Um, William Hunter's Vintage Wagon Museum. So that's William Hunter's Vintage Wagon Museum. So if you're into all of that, make sure you check it out. Well, thank you very much for chatting to us, Ian, and we'll let you crack on. Right, thank you very much. Attracting quite a bit of attention today is Chris and Beverly's Humber Scepter Mark II. And in fact, we've had loads of people that keep walking in front of us trying to have a good look at the car because this just isn't a car that you see every day. But you took a bit of a gamble on this, didn't you? Because Chris already had a classic car and he almost did that Jack in the Beanstalk classic manoeuvre and swapped his old car for a Humber Scepter. Now, you at home have got to tell me if you think you made the right decision. What did you swap for this car? I swapped a 1970 Triumph Stag for this, literally swapped and shook hands on it. I think it's so good. You just turned up and tell us the story because you tell it better than anyone. Um, it was it was a one of those random things. I just happened to notice that the car was actually in a, a normal car dealership not too far from here. Yeah. And we went out for a drive on a Sunday to take a look and he only had it because he'd bought it for his daughter's wedding. Um, and when I turned up, he'd actually um, sold it that morning. And I saw the car and fell in love with it. And I said, um, I would have bought this. And he said, well, if you want to buy it, you better buy it today. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I actually said, I'm only allowed one toy. And he said, do you want to swap the stag? <laughs> he said, I like stags. And we literally just shook hands. And that was it. It was mine. And that was 10 years ago. The million dollar question is, have you ever regretted it? No. I no. don't blame you. This car is just beautiful. And in fact, we were having a chat the other day. And it's just so wonderful how many people have just come over and shared their memories with you and are reminiscing about being a child in one a passenger a driver learning to drive in a way that sometimes you only see for the more commonplace cars like your minis and your morris minors how many of these are left do we know there's not many left they were a very expensive car when they were mm. new and they did rust like everything else. This is probably unique because it's never been restored. This has just been looked after. And so it's original paint and everything? It has been painted. OK. But it's not been restored. It's never been welded. OK. Um, it was painted in 1980. I only know that because an, an older owner got in touch with me through the Humber really? Owners Club when I first got it and said, that was my, that was my dad's car. And in 1980, we painted it. Oh. So uh, it, it, it's a proper Humber colours as well. So. It is just such a stunning example. Do you come out a lot in it? Do you drive it in all weathers? No, sunshine. It, only, it, it doesn't see wet, it doesn't see rain, and I don't like to get it wet. Um, Understandable. It was nicknamed Harry by one of his previous owners, which is kind of stuck. So Harry the Humber only comes out when it's dry. <laughs> and do you know what? I don't blame you because cars are only original ones, and once you start chasing that tin worm, it can just be a never-ending experience, and cars end up looking like patchwork quills, and it just takes something away, and they never as good as they were when they were first like this so it's a real credit to you that harry looks like this now it's what a stunning stunning car in terms of your parts if you need to get anything how easy is it it's not too easy there's a pretty good supplier okay. speedy spares and ebay is always a good shop um some parts like for the engine are very similar to the hillman hunters you can get things trim okay. bits are almost you know you'd have to buy a car they're very very rare really? to get so if you see something you get it so what you learn to do is to fix everything because you either have to fix it or make a new one because you can't buy a new one so but there we go we talk about that british ingenuity and that bulldog spirit coming in and keeping these vehicles alive we were talking about it when we were doing that mgc video you can see it here in the flesh now it must be a rather alarming display on because someone's alarm's gone off and unfortunately it's one of the boring modern cars it's not one of the exciting classics now, I think we're going to go and have a look, see what else we've got. But thank you very much for bringing, your, bringing Harry out today. No problem. And just well done for taking such great care. <laughs> thank you. We were walking back to the car to grab the battery charger and something has appeared right next to me. And Fred said, that's it, that's my car on the show. Now, I was really shocked because I thought that he was going to pick one of the series Land Rovers. Fred, what has made this Rover 75 your car of the show for you? Um... The, the thing with this Rover is I, I sort of see it as the last hurrah for Rover. Um, it was the last sort of 
yeah, yeah. model that they really went all out on. This one especially has absolute top of the line spec. It has every mod car and it has you know everything they offered is basically what this is here. Um, and we got a little um, I don't know just. It's one of those things that it's not quite old enough that it's always out, but when you do see it, you just think, yeah. That, that, that's, that's it's, a, it's a very early one, being on a tea yeah, plate. Yeah. And I think that's the thing, is that I personally, and we talk about this a lot, because Fred's into a lot more modern stuff than I am, and you really appreciate this generation, yeah. whereas I still see it as quite a modern car, and I think of it as being a modern car. But actually, how many Rover 75s do you see? Because every time we pass one, we always go, oh, there's a 75. Or, yeah, there, there uh, can't be many of these left now, this, especially in this condition. No, absolutely no not. it is a beautiful example. So I guess we're halfway there. It is a Rover, not a Land Rover. We've got a bit of the Rover in yeah, there. Yeah, we're but getting there, are we? Yeah. Absolutely. It's a, it's a good choice, and um, for 75 owners out there, they are they are so well loved. That's the first thing, and you will never meet an owners club like 75 people. They adore their cars, which really gives me hope that they'll get into that next generation and they'll really permeate that classic car scene, especially as the next generation evolves. But also, they're a very usable car. You can put children in them. You can put all your stuff in. You've got seat belts all around. They're just, I guess, there's a classic edge to it, but they're still relatively modern enough that you can yeah. keep up the traffic and you've got all your mod cons. Yeah. So yeah, I'll let you have that as car of the show. <laughs> right, let's go and see what else we've got. It's always really difficult to pick your car of the show and people ask me every single time and it was a real toss up between a few different things and in fact one of my favourite things was that Tesco lorry because that is a cracking bit of history to have here and something I've never seen before. However, this Austin A40 Devon pickup is definitely my car of the show for two reasons. Number one is it's just such a beautiful car and number two is it's a variant of the A47 that I have never seen before in my life and I was talking to the owner who chose not to appear on camera and he was telling me all about the car and it's funny isn't it because sometimes you hear a story about a car and you you're into it anyway and then you hear the story and you think oh I like it even more now so Ian was telling me that him and his dad worked on this together over 40 years ago so this was resprayed around 40 years ago and it's not the original green so I did ask because for those of you that really know your BMC Austin colors you're going to probably guess that that's not the original green the green that it is is it's a Ford green which is kind of similar but Ian's dad preferred it to the BMC colors which it's fair enough because I've done the same on my own car. But as you can see, the paint has fared so well to say it's been on the car for 40 years, which is a testament to the owner because a car that isn't cherished and well looked after will not even survive four years looking this great, let alone 40. So beautiful paint job on it. And I said, oh, you know, you, you experts and what you've done. And Ian was telling me that he learned to weld 40 years ago on this car to put it back on the road lovely bit of kit great bit of heritage for you know these would have been so commonplace at one point in time nowadays when did you last see one i don't think i've ever seen one and it's a wonderful piece of british history to be with us here today at the british commercial vehicle museum now if you haven't ever been here before and i will be honest i've not been in quite some time and it's so good nowadays it was really great back then but now over 10 years later it's a great bit of kit we're going to pop inside now. I'm going to give you a quick one minute whistle stop tour of some of the stuff inside. And then I think we'll probably head on home or maybe have a look at a few more cars. We'll see what we can manage. Right, come on, let's go and have a look.
Well, I thought we're at a commercial event. I'm going to ramp up from the Morris Minor I arrived in to something a little bit bigger because I've bought a lot of antiques on eBay recently and I need to get them all home without paying for postage. Now, if you get a chance to go to a commercial vehicle event this year or even next year, make sure you do because the people that I've met today have been so friendly, so knowledgeable and so open about sharing their passion in the vehicles that I've really enjoyed this event in a way that I perhaps wasn't expecting to. And I think what What's really great is that vehicles like this were never intended to see 20, even the two, year 2000, let alone 2024. They were designed to be used, abused and discarded without any sentiment whatsoever. And yet nowadays there's a whole army of people, silent heroes across the UK that not only take these vehicles and cherish them, but also nurture them into vehicles which come to life which are put back onto the road and there are thousands of hours in every single vehicle that we've seen here today which deserves appreciation in spades for every single set of wheels that you've seen i've really enjoyed this show if it's not in your calendar for next year it definitely should be remember you can get a visit into the museum as well i've really enjoyed it even as a typical normal classic car -y sort of person not usually being in my realm of interest however it's time for me to start up this big old girl and uh go home so I probably should have asked how to start it what am I doing <laughs> this is the magic we've got to we've got to push start on this one guys and then it's push start I'm nearly there right are you ready oh my goodness Right, well that's it from me today. I'm off home, so take care and drive safely.